The big question most people seem to ask is, why, after nearly two years, has no one been arrested for the murder of John Benet Ramsey? Well, the insider you're about to meet has a very strong opinion. He is Steve Thomas, and he was one of the lead detectives in the Ramsey investigation, and then suddenly, last month, he quit, igniting a firestorm of controversy. Tonight, for the first time, he speaks out. And while his ground rule was that he wouldn't discuss the evidence, he does tell Elizabeth Vargas and the rest of us why he thinks this murder remains unsolved. This case took over your life. Well, it absolutely did. It became all-consuming, night and day, the birthdays and holidays, and Christmas and anniversary that we spent uh, away from home. Detective Steve Thomas is a dedicated cop with a solid record for 13 years. For nearly two years, he says he and other detectives worked 100-hour weeks, all in the name of justice for a murdered six-year-old. That's some of the sentiment behind where, where the detectives stand and what they feel uh, about John Benet. And yet on August 6th, you resigned from your job. A career that uh, I loved, a career uh, that I think I was pretty good at. But on that painful day he resigned, on John Benet's birthday, Detective Thomas sent flowers to her grave turned in his badge, and wrote a scathing letter. In your letter, you made a very serious allegation accusing the district attorney, Alex Hunter, of thoroughly compromising the Ramsey investigation. I stand by my letter. That letter, a five-page, single-spaced hand grenade thrown right into a case that seemed to have stalled for months. In it, Thomas accused the Boulder District Attorney's Office of mishandling and compromising the case. He accused them of shameless tactics against innocent people, of failing to support basic search warrants for telephone and credit card records, and of sharing police evidence with the Ramseys and their lawyers. It just got to a point where it was very disheartening. Also in Thomas's letter, the serious accusation that some evidence was never collected, some never tested, because of the office of Boulder's district attorney, Alex Hunter. If I come across as arrogant, I apologize to you for that. Citing the sensitivity surrounding the grand jury, Hunter declined our request for an interview. Some people might say, well, you are the police. It doesn't matter what support or lack thereof you're getting from the DA's office. Just go out and get the evidence and tell us who the killer is. Why can't you do that? Maybe on television, but police detectives know uh, that that is not the case in real life. Do the police know who killed John Benet Ramsey? I'm not going to answer that question. He says he is loyal to his victim above all else, and since his resignation, many have called him a hero who forced a reluctant prosecutor to convene a grand jury. Some call him a traitor. There have been some critics who maintain that your letter may actually hurt um, a prosecution's case in the future that in fact it may be used in a trial to help a defendant get off. I hate to think that the truth would hurt anything. You call this case a failure of the system. Those are very harsh words. We're coming up on the second anniversary of this homicide. Uh, I certainly don't see a success or a victory of justice. Did John Benet get to you more than other cases? Absolutely. Someone uh, needs to stand up and speak for John Bonet. Uh, she can't speak for herself, and the detectives tried to do that. We're going to solve this case, but we're going to do it our way. As Boulder's district attorney for 26 years, running the last seven terms unopposed, Alex Hunter is certainly popular. Yet the Steve Thomas letter ignited a firestorm of criticism. We asked him to remove the case from Alex Hunter's jurisdiction. Some key Ramsey case witnesses joined Thomas in a call for a special prosecutor, like Fleet White and his wife Priscilla, who had dinner with the Ramseys that Christmas day. 
it is likely that the district attorney has attempted to discourage police detectives. Last month, a front page column called Alex Hunter the reluctant prosecutor. Veteran reporter Juliet Whitman outlined a sampling of cases not filed or undercharged. I think there's real fear and incompetence and laziness. Attorney Claudia Bailiff ran Boulder's Rape Crisis Center for five years. She says she was so surprised at the plea bargains for child molesters. In 1990, she prepared this formal study of Hunter's record. The most staggering statistic we came up with was of 60 individuals who were convicted of sexually abusing children or incest. Only one went to prison. And we were absolutely stunned by that. Bailiff resigned in frustration. The new team at the Rape Crisis Center says Hunter's record has improved. But what about the thorny case of Sid Wells, murdered in 1983? June Manger is Sid Wells' mother. It's like deja vu for me watching the Ramsey case. Before John Bonet, the world media swarmed on Boulder to cover the murder case of Sid Wells, the steady boyfriend of Shauna Redford, Robert Redford's daughter. Wells, a handsome journalism student, was fatally shot in his apartment in the back of the head with a 20-gauge shotgun. Fred Neitzel was the lead detective on the case. He arrested Sid Wells' roommate, Thane Smyka. How convinced were you that Thane Smyka was the killer? I was very convinced myself. 100% sure? My opinion was 100%. Back then, cops found Thane Smyka with a 20-gauge shotgun and two rare shells with pellets the FBI said chemically matched the ones found in the victim's head. But Hunter's office thought the case was weak, and Smyka was out of jail in less than a month. But there was something else that made the detectives angry. This document, Neitzel says he found it by accident. It shows a puzzling deal Hunter cut with the suspected murderer. If Smyka would waive his right to a speedy trial, Hunter would guarantee a grand jury would not indict him. At first it was total shock, then it became rage. The deal did allow for a future prosecution, and now, under the scrutiny of the Ramsey case, the Smyka case has been reopened. State-of-the-art ballistics tests confirm the old ones. But here's the problem. Thane Smyka skipped town and disappeared more than a decade ago. Again, June Menger, the murder victim's mother, on Alex Hunter. I think he should resign. But the pressing question today is, can District Attorney Alex Hunter rise to the current challenge of the Ramsey case? Again, ABC News consultant Vincent Bugliosi. Well, I'm sure he's an honorable uh, person and he's interested in seeking justice in this case, but uh, he's certainly not the stereotypical DA who's tough and hard-nosed, and you need an aggressive DA in a situation like this. And he apparently is not that type of person. Which perhaps is why his critics say it took public protest to get the Ramsey case to a grand jury after nearly two years. Remember, a grand jury can compel reluctant witnesses to testify. How unusual is it to wait that long to impanel a grand well, jury to investigate? It's, it's highly unusual, particularly when you have two suspects and they're not cooperating with you. I mean, it's a DA 101 that when you have two suspects, you do everything possible immediately to separate those two and not give them time for their stories to harden and to reconcile with each other. It's being done now, a year and a half later, but it's a little late in the day. Incompetence. Incompetence. Incompetence, right. Based on what we know right now, based on what our sources have told us is the evidence right now, right. if they don't come up with anything more, is this the perfect murder? Obviously, if they don't come up with enough evidence, then the perpetrators committed a perfect murder in him. And now one more note in the case. This weekend, a detective who came out of retirement to help the district attorney try to solve the case resigned, saying he believes an intruder committed the crime. As for Steve Thomas, he now works as a carpenter. And the grand jury? It has been at work for four days, hearing testimony from the first police officers to arrive at the crime scene. This man knows the rewards of giving, and maybe you've given to one of his